Guess what? Guess what time it is? It is time to do. Feel oh, sticky sometimes, so don't mind me. But it's time to do another board game. This one's not really a board game, though. This one is a fun murder mystery. So, <coughs> um, I don't have a printer, so I'm using it from my phone. So don't mind me. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Present it. Okay, perfect. So please print out this PDF on standard U.S. letter um, for best results. Please keep the pages in order after printing. So you can go find this on Etsy, and um, I will leave the link below. Excuse me, oh my god. You can only use this information provided with the objective one to solve it. Once you've done that, you can proceed, proceed to objective two. You can then use all the new evidence in Objective 2, as well as everything you've learned in Objective 1 to solve Objective 2, and so on and so forth. A pen pencil is required in order to complete some of the clues. You will need access to the internet in order to view clues and solutions we cannot add to the clues and answers to the PDF as they could be accidentally seen and ruined in the experience. We hope you enjoyed this murder mystery and be sure to check out the others in the series. Want a discount off your next purchase um, and then sign up. So this one is, you can get a discount. I, I have a discount for 15%, right? Is that what it says? Or no, um, we'll only email you when you have a discount or new products for you. So you can sign up and you will receive a 15% discount. So here is the murder mystery. Hiking Trails of Betrayal. You've been asked to help out with a high-profile case. You'll find everything you need to solve this case in the text and images provided. Read everything carefully to get an understanding of the suspects. Not everything will be straightforward. Some clues may not make sense at first, but will become, a clear, become clear as the story develops. You will receive additional information about the case as it unfolds. Some clues and objectives will guide you towards the answer, or they may help you exclude certain suspects. Pay close attention to the clues to avoid being misled. <clears throat> you have six objectives to complete. When you think you have solved an objective, you can use the link at the bottom to check if you are correct or not. Make sure you are complete. Objective. Before proceeding, you can also use link below to check for clues if you really if you're really stuck. A pen and pencil is required in order to complete some of the clues. We hope you enjoyed this murder mystery, and be sure to check out the others in the series. Enjoy the ride. Okay, so before we start, I'm gonna go find a pen and pencil or pen and paper. Sorry, give me one second. Um, so there's the QR code. <clears throat> I wish I had the paper with me, but I have blank paper. Okay, blank paper. So we can write things down. So let's start with object one. Thanks again for helping on the pos on this possible case. We have a biologist who fell from a cliff on a local hiking trail. It looks like an unlucky accident but I'd love for you to, to have a look to see if we missed anything. I sent over a summary of the case as, we, as well as any photos that we had available. We spoke to a local bar owner who lives and works at the start of the trail. She gave us some insights into the life of the victim I've also provided a transcript of the conversation we had with the man who found the victim's body. Mr. Nathaniel Green was actually featured in a newspaper article on the day of his death. I've obtained a copy for you, and I've only I've also decided or sorry, I've also downloaded the, don't, downloaded the last photo he posted 
to his social media on the day he fell. So objective one, what does this uh, need? What does this case need further investigation? What three things seem to be out of place? So <clears throat> the evidence is. I sent over a summary of the case, as well as any photos that we had available. We spoke to a local bar owner who lives and works at the start of the trail. She gave us some insight in the life of the victim. I've also provided a transcript of the conversation we had with the man who found the bo- a victim's body. Mr. Nathaniel Green <coughs> was actually featured in the newspaper article on the day of his death, I've obtained a copy for you, and I've also downloaded the last photo he posted on his social media on the day he fell. Okay, so date of the report, <coughs> August 4th, <coughs> oh my gosh, 2023, investigating officer date of incident, or sorry, date of report, August 4th, 2023, investigating officer Detective Ran- Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds? No I'm kidding. Date of incident July thirty first, twenty twenty three. Time of incident between ten a.m. and eleven a.m. Location: Whispering Pines Trail, and victim Mr. Nathaniel Green, thirty five, biologist. <clears throat> Nature of incident report: Death from falling off the cliff. The deceased Nathaniel Green was found at the base of a steep cliff, the Sutton Trail on Trail A. It takes one hour and 20 minutes to get from the mountaintop where he started to where he fell. Evidence at the scene indicated or indicates that he fell from the edge of the cliff in the viewing area of one trail and landed in another trail further down the hill. The fall caused severe injuries that led to his death. So, so here are the injuries. Okay, sorry. I'll just make sure. Injuries, head, so there's head trauma, severe blunt force trauma to the head, resulting in fractures to the skull. This may have been caused by an impact during the fall, multiple broken bones, fractures to both legs, internal injuries, internal bleeding in abdomen and lungs, lacerations and abrasions. I do have to make a disclosure because this is a, a, um, a fake fun game. It's all fake and good fun, but there is trigger warnings in this case. If you do not want to listen, I suggest you shut this off and move. Uh, I'll move to one of my other videos, which are more fun than like more um, positive and doesn't talk about this. His his body was found by Mr. Zachary Evans on August 1st on Trail E. Property Mr. Green did not have any possession on his person. However, we did find a hiking backpack at the top of the cliff. So, he had a hiking backpack, so it wasn't on him, but it probably belonged to him. I would assume... So someone must have, like, took it off of him as he was either being pushed or before he was pushed. Or whatever. We completed a thorough search of the area between his backpack and body, as well as the surrounding area. No other items were found. Preliminary findings, the injuries sustained, showed that we would have died immediately after the fall. The initial examination of the scene did not reveal any signs of a struggle. Time of death is estimated uh to have been between 10 a.m and 11 a.m on july 31st 2023 okay so in the backpack there is a trailblaze thermos a trailblaze hat a notebook gener- generic rope generic coffee crockery trailblaze jacket explorer shovel compass camera knife and mobile phone so obviously we need to crack into that phone um, so this shows the newspaper, um, prominent painting by renowned artist snatched on unveiling day, wildlife poaching spark concerns in Sutton County, and then, um, it's heartbreaking to see such disregard, um, Balance said Nathaniel Green, a renowned biologist based on Sutton County, the illegal poaching not only um, puts our wildlife at risk, but it also disrupts the nature, uh, na- natural order of ecosystem can have a re- far-reaching consequence. Recent incidents of illegal traps and snares have been discovered on popular hiking trails. 
Oh. Indicating that poachers are operating in close proximity to areas frequently frequented by outdoor enthusiasts, the traps are often set in a way that possess a danger to both animals and unsuspecting hikers, escalating concerns about public safety. Local law enforcement agencies are collaborating with life, wildlife conser conservation organization to address the issue and apprehend the responsible for those illicit um, activities. The Sutton County Police Department has urged residents to report any suspicion, suspicious behavior sign of poaching to help curb the escalating problem. Come on, people. For next one, so interview report. <coughs> Person of interest, Miss Cheryl Ford, dated August 1st, 2023, location Sutton County Police Station, interrogating officers, Detective Ryan Reynolds. No, it's just Detective Reynolds. It'd be nice, but he's not a detective. Okay, Detective Reynolds, thank you for talking to me, Miss Ford. I know this is difficult, and I appreciate your cooperation. Can you tell me when you last saw Nathaniel Green? Shell Ford in brackets says she's crying. Oh, officer, this is just terrible. The last time that boy was on the same, the last time I saw that boy on, was on the same day as his hike, 31st of July. He came by my bar, the mountaintop, for breakfast before leaving. He was so young. What time was that? <coughs> it must have been around 8 a.m. He just had a quick sandwich before heading out. How do you, what, 8 a.m. sandwich? Anyways, he asked me to take a photo of him at the start of the trail with his phone. That was the last time I saw him. She's sobbing. Detective Reynolds, I understand this is hard for you. We won't keep you long. What was your relationship with Nathaniel? He was, off, he was here often, almost like part of the family. We chat for hours at a time. Doc, detective, do you like Miss... Do you hike, Miss Ford? She says I do. Everyone that lives around here does. I go a few times a week. Have you ever hiked with Nathaniel? She says no. They hike together. Sometimes he lives very close to my bar. He's been busy painting his house the last few days, so he hasn't been around. He's going to be heartbroken. Does he usually hike alone? That boy liked the solitude and peacefulness of hiking alone. It gave him a chance to be one with nature. He's really into bird watching, and he would get these amazing photos of a local wildlife. Detective Reynolds, did he sound unusual the last time you spoke to him? Did, he, did anything seem off? No, he seemed... His usual self, he popped in around 8 a.m. that day. He was like a Swiss watch, that one always on time. He ate really quick, paid, and left. Can you tell where they were found his body? I'm sorry, Miss Ford, but I can't reveal specific details at this time. Cheryl, I understand. It's just this is all so shocking. I can't believe he's gone. Detective Reynolds, thanks for your cooperation, Miss Ford. Your insights are very helpful. If you think of anything else, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, of course, officer, I'll do anything to help. So, what do you guys think? You think she could be the one? Or, do you think this next person, person of interest, Mr. Zachary Evans, could be the one? Let me know what you guys think below as we go through this game. Interview report. Mr. Zachary Evans, um, and again, Reynolds is detective interrogating him. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Evans. We appreciate your willingness to help with our investigation. Could you please tell us about the last time you saw Nathaniel Green alive? Uh, takes a deep breath in brackets. Of course, Detective, the last time I saw Nathaniel um, about, was about two days ago. We crossed paths while hiking on July 29th. I see him sometimes if I take Trail B. Detective Reynolds, can you describe your relationship with Nathaniel? Nathaniel and I were acquaintances, you could say. We bumped into each other for a few times while out hiking, but I don't know him well. I've seen his face around the trails, but I've only just learned his name today. Did you, uh, Detective Reynolds, did you and Nathaniel have any insignificant interactions or discussions during your last meeting? Not particularly. We just waved to each other. He was on his way down, and I was just starting my hike. 
You dis you discovered Nathaniel's body, correct? Yes, unfortunately, I was hiking Trail E today, and when I got near the end, I noticed something in the rocks off the main path. I went to investigate and stumbled upon his lifeless body. It was a shock, and I can't even put it into words. That's when I called you guys. Detective Reynolds sa uh, says, I see you have a camera and binoculars with you. Do you share a similar interest with Nathaniel hiking birds watching the photography? He says, yes, I do. I, or Zach says, yes, I do. I've always been passionate about those activities. I like whenever I'm not working, and I love taking photos. By the way, what do you do for a living? Uh, Reynolds asks. Zachary, I'm a freelance writer. I work from home mostly. Sometimes I sit in Cheryl's bar and work from there. It's not the best paying job, but I get a lot of free time for my hobbies. Do you know anyone we need to inform about his passing? You'll definitely want to tell Sandra. She says X. She'll be de devastated. Well, I'm not going to keep you, Mr. Evans. Thank you for your time. We have your details and we'll contact you if you have more questions. Okay, that's no problem. Okay, so there's a Facebook post of Nathaniel Green, July 31st, 2023. Sorry, I'm going to cut out where I'm texting. <laughs> so Facebook post of Nathaniel Green, some morning exercise. Okay, wait. Oh, oops. Trail A closed, trail C closed for your safety. Don't carry open food and drinks on the trail and do not feed any animals you meet you meet there. <coughs> so handsome when you coming to visit. We haven't seen you in ages. Enjoy buddy. So what was objective one? Because we're on objective two now. What three things seem out of place? That one's hard because, like, I don't know. So, let's see. The incident report death from falling off the cliff. The deceased Nathaniel Green was found at the base of the steep. So, what seems out of place? This is confusing because there's a lot to read I will never be a detective in my lifetime and I'm okay with that Mr. Green did not have any possession on his person but they found his hiking backpack in trail A huh okay it contained hiking gear listed so they took he took trail A obviously but trail A was closed Right? Yeah, trail A was closed. And um He did have a backpack, it shows. How did the backpack get up there? Or stay up there? And why would he take a closed trail? <clears throat> and how did that guy find him? I want to keep my eye on Zachary Evans, because how come, how did he find him? And I'd keep my eye on Cheryl Ford as well.
Okay. And why did she say where they found, where did they find his body? Um, thank you for cooperation. So he popped in and out, and he was like a switch, he ate really quick, paid and left. So he was like antsy almost. Okay, so that's objective one, I think. The backpack seems out of place. Obviously trail A was closed, and the just seeming off. Okay. I think that's what I think. I got, if you guys got something out of it, please let me know. Now, objective two. Now, um, thanks for taking a look at this case. I'm not sure how we missed those clues. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to need to go on because the tranquil wilderness of the Sutton Forest Trails have been marred by a growing concern. Environments authorities have high alert reports and illegal poaching activities. Oh, you know what? The other thing that was off was like those illegal, um, like traps and stuff in the woods too. I just want to see if I'm right. So I'm going to check that. Let's see. Let's see. Clues. Objective one, three reasons why this case needs further attention. Nathaniel has always taken the same route. According to Cheryl, what he does, he only takes a, what he does, he only takes a different route. If A is closed or B is closed. So A was closed only takes a different route. Clue two, there is an item missing from Nathaniel's belongings. Oh yes, okay. So, objective um, one, okay, so two, an item missing from belonging bag I'll put three check out the Facebook post not the photo the post oh so I was wrong Nathaniel always takes the same route so a maybe so always takes Same route. According to Cheryl, when does he only take a different route? So I was totally wrong. So it's newspaper. Two. Oh, Facebook and um. Oh, I think it's 
and share two binoculars. Cheryl Zachary. And weather binoculars and Facebook. Okay, so let me, I don't get that. Yes. So I'm over here. Who one? Natalia always takes the same route. According to Cheryl, one does he only take a different route? I see. And then check out the Facebook post. Not photo. Okay, so let's try this again. Okay. So we need, so the newspaper, there was an item missing. July morning. See, this doesn't. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so that's objective one. What do you guys think? That's already thirty three minutes in. What do you think, objective one? I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna keep it a whole surprise for you guys at the end. We're gonna. Uh, or actually, maybe we'll do a little longer one. I don't know yet. Nah. We'll do a part two. I gotta take out things anyways. Um, or, or what? You know what? Yeah, I'll do a part two. And then a part three and a part four. But I kind of want to keep this one going for now. So so let's do this one. And then we'll, we'll finish objective two. And then we will go on to... A part two of the next objective so give me one moment let me get back to where I was what I was doing okay objective two thanks for taking a look at this case I'm not sure how we missed those clues his death has been marked suspicious and we started investigating we've had another look at the shovel and have found almost in perceptible traces of blood it appears that Nathaniel was hit at the back of the head him to fall off the cliff. However, there were no fingerprints on or DNA on it. New evidence up upon closure inspection of the shovel or closer inspection of the shovel in Nathaniel's possession, we found that it had the name Brad Walker scratched into it. It was almost completely uh, worn away. So objective two. So Brad. Walker name on shovel. Okay, it was almost completely worn away. We called Mr. Walker in to give a statement. We also found some interesting drawings pasted, pasted, oh my gosh, pasted in his notebook. I'm <laughs> not sure what they mean by I've included photos of him. We've been through Nathaniel's phone and everything seemed pretty standard besides some text from Brad Walker and Sandra Phillips. We've called her in for statements as well as you'll find 
transcripts of our conversations with both of them attached. So objective two, why did Nathaniel take a trail A? Why did Nathaniel take trail A when it was closed? He take trail A when it was closed. Okay. Let's see, let's see. Okay, so I just got to zoom in here. <clears throat> so trail B observations, trap A, or trap one approximately three miles into the trail spotted a snare traps near to fallen a uh, tree like near a fallen tree, likely set for smaller mammals, disarmed and removed for safety. Trap two around four around the four mile mark noticed a foothold trap near a clearing at it seemed quite quite oddly and rusty. Quite old and rusty. It's possible it's not in use, but I marked its location for future reference. Trap three further along the trail near a small stream discovered what appeared to be a live cage trap. No signs of activity, but locations is marked on the map. Trap four off the main path found a bear trap. The trigger mechanism seems quite elaborate, disarmed, and dismantled. Overall, it's concerning to come across so many traps on a single hike. I'll be reporting these uh, findings to authorities, although they have not followed up with me about any of my previous reports. I'll continue to document any further instances of an animal traps during my hikes. <clears throat> and then again on tra trail B the next uh, five days later, no traps found. And then I want to go back out. Okay. Okay, so just, what? Those patterns? Those, those must be clues of some sort. You think I'm good at this? Not one bit. <laughs> so, Okay, I don't know what that means for sure. <laughs> Messages between Sandra and Nathaniel. So what she says is you've got some nerve, Nathaniel. Seriously, after everything we've been through, this is how you end things. A so pathetic, it's not working out. You break my heart and you think you can just walk away like it's nothing. You have no idea how much I loved you, how much I invested in this relationship. I stood by you and I... When times were tough, I believed in you, and now you're telling me it's over just like that. You think you can do better than me? Good luck with that, Nathaniel. You'll never find anyone who will love you as much as I did. You'll regret letting me go. Mark my words. You're not just walking away from me. You're walking away from everything we built together, all the dreams we had, the plans we made, and for what? I hope your conscience eats at you. Knowing that you tore apart something beautiful and genuine, but I real I I refuse to be the one left heartbroken and defeated. I'll find happiness without you. Goodbye, Nathaniel. Don't bother trying to come back when you realize that you've lost. It. When you realize you've lost what you've lost, it'll be too late. All he says is okay, dude. I've got something important to show you. Meet me at the fifth. Oh, this is from Brad. Sorry. Meet me at the fifth stop on trail A tomorrow at ten a.m. Uh-oh, so Brad, this is why he was told to meet Brad, okay, at 10 a.m. I was planning to hit the trail, um, B tomorrow, trail A, fifth stop, 10 a.m., there's something you'll want to see, bring your binoculars, you can only spot it from there. I feel like this is too soon that he's innocent. Okay, fine, but only, but only if it's open to be worth. If it's open, it better be worth it. 
So Mr. Brad Walker is definitely um, being interviewed by Detective Reynolds. Good afternoon, Mr. Walker. Thank you for being here. Can you tell us when you last saw uh, Nathaniel? Hey, Detective, I saw him a few days before he died on the 28th. We had a drink at the mountaintop. Can you describe your, your relationship with Nathaniel? Nat and I were like brothers. You know, we hung out a lot. We had lots of share in, shared interests. You told Nathaniel that you wanted to meet him on the day he died. What did you want to show him? Wait, what? We have, text, we have a text message on his phone from you saying that you wanted to meet him. Brad, that's crazy. I haven't messaged him in a while now. Hell, I don't even have my phone. I lost it. When did you lose your phone? It was the same night Nat and I went out for a few drinks. He left and I stayed late and I got seriously hammered and I must have dropped my phone on the way home. I'm not too sure. Look, I swear I didn't message him to meet. And where were, where were on the day that Nathaniel was murdered? I was supposed to be at home, but I got called into work. They had an emergency out of state. I had to get on a five-hour flight the next morning while still hungover. I was away until August 1st. How did your work contact you if you lost your phone? I have a separate work phone. I used that while I was away and figured I'd search for my phone when I got back. Do you have proof you're out of town? Yeah, sure. I can get you my hotel invoice and you can talk to the guy I work with as well. Did you and Nathaniel hike together often? Not often, but whenever we were both free. He's a biologist and I'm an ecologist. We're both tree huggers. That's one of the reasons we get along so well. Did Nathaniel have any enemies? No, everyone loved him. He's a great guy. Detective Reynolds, by the way, we have found a shovel with your name on it with Nathaniel's belongings. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, I misplaced some other stuff to <clears throat> that same night we were out drinking my phone, shovel, notebook, and a bunch of other stuff as well. Detective Reynolds, we believe that the shovel was the weapon used to knock Nathaniel off the cliff. What? No, I really had nothing to do with this, I promise. He was like my brother and never hurt him. Uh, this is crazy. I want a lawyer. I'm not saying another word. And now his ex-girlfriend's being uh, inter uh, interrogated, Sandra Phillips. Good afternoon, Miss Thompson. Thank you for being here. Can you tell us that you lost, you lo you saw Nathaniel Green? Hello, Detective. I saw Nathaniel Green a bit over a week July. We had a coffee at a cafe uptown. Can you describe your relationship with Nathaniel? Nathaniel and I were close. We used to be in a relationship until a few days ago, but he we remained friends after our breakup. Can I ask who broke up with whom? He broke up with me. We had some disagreements about silly stuff, and I guess it all it all just became too much for him. Could you elaborate on the disagreements? Well, he was ta taking a lot of hikes instead of spending time with me. I knew it was important for him, but I, didn't, I don't enjoy it, so it was like he was trying to get away from me. And then there's the matter of money he's been using in his ancient phone as a camera all his life. Last year, he'd save up enough to buy a proper camera, but then lent that money to Brad instead. I felt like he was prioritizing him over himself and over us sometimes. Brad is super irresponsible, the complete opposite of Nate. Brad Walker? Correct. Yes, Brad Walker. He always seems to seem to need Nathaniel's help when he got himself into trouble. Did Nathaniel and Brad hike together a lot? Oh yes, all the time. They would walk up to the highest cliffs, sit there with the binoculars, and watch wild birds and animals for hours. I had to always tell Nathaniel to stand back from the edge. I was terrified that he'd fall. I went with them a few times. They had their own special bond. Whoever was walking ahead would leave tree notes for the next person behind them. It was their silly thing. What are tree notes? They would be secret messages that only the other could understand. I tried to read some of them, but I could never figure them out. They got more. They get more and more complicated each time. That's interesting. So where were you on July 31st? I was at home all day sleeping and watching movies. Did you leave the house at any point that day? No, I didn't stay in the whole... I, I stayed in the whole day. I did step outside for a few minutes, but only because I heard a strange noise. Was someone outside? No, it sounded like someone was in my yard, but when I checked, no one was there. There was this ugly rainbow-colored park, parked car parked outside my yard, though. It, was, it looked really familiar, but then I tried to get a closer look and drove off. And where do you, abouts do you live? Oops. 
<laughs> oh, I live on over on Madison Drive. It's really far. It's really far from the hiking trail. <clears throat> About two and a half hours each way, maybe two hours if I sped the whole way. That's another reason I didn't like going. You didn't have to work that day? What is it that you do, Miss Phillips? I work in an art gallery, but it closed at the moment, so I have time, some time off. Uh, do you know Cheryl Ford from the bar? Yes, I know her. She's very nosy but harmless, but I think her pushiness drives a lot of business away. That's probably why the bar almost went bankrupt a while back. She tries to be friendly and jolly at the time, but sometimes customers just want to be left alone. Thank you for talking to me. I'm sorry for your loss. Okay, so we know why. We now understand why Nat Nathaniel felt it was safe to use the trail. Okay, so we're going to end that there. Part two is coming. You guys enjoy this one. Chat soon. Bye now.